Hey watch friends, today we're going to take a look at this upcoming piece from the microbrand La Sablier, and this is their Chronosport. This one is going to be coming to Kickstarter shortly after posting this. It's actually going to be going live on August 31st of 2022. So do stay tuned for that. I will have a link down in the description as well. As far as administrative matters right off the bat, I do want to mention this is a prototype that was loaned into the channel for review. So if you see scratches, scuffs, etc., it can be attributed to that. Additionally, you might have noticed the paid promotion. They are sending me a production version of this once it's ready. So I do want to be upfront about that. Won't impact the review. However, I want to be very transparent. As far as the basic specs, first, for what it comes with. We'll get to that throughout. The final, the packaging has not yet been finalized. That's in the works. They expect it to be simple, pretty basic packaging. It will come standard with a one-year warranty. Not ideal, but as we'll talk about, this has reliable components in, so I don't think it's going to be a big problem. As far as the case size, this from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock, so not including that crown guard there, this is coming in at 41 and a half millimeters on my calipers. The bezel, as you can see, which it's unique shape, but going from the farthest protrusion there is coming in at 39.6 millimeters. So a nice step down for that. It gives you plenty of lip and you'll see as we go throughout, it is very size versatile. The lugs, this one's a little bit tough. As you can see here, it is a quasi integrated bracelet look. And I say quasi because it is actually cut in and you can see quick release spring bars that we'll look at further. But the actual lugs on this are a standard 20 millimeters. However, that's with an asterisk. The, even though it does have a standard 20 millimeter um, cut there, you will not be able to just use most straps because of the access for this. So it doesn't really have the clearance to fit even though the lugs will fit. That being said, they are including standard with all of these, an adapter that will take that out a little bit further and allow you to use your 20 millimeter straps. The actual bracelet itself comes out to about 22 millimeters, and we'll look at that and talk about that further in that portion as well. Additionally, they will be offering, part of the reason for the quick release spring bars there, they will be offering custom tailored straps for this as well. So that's going to be optional, but the bracelet standard and the link adapter is standard as well. The lug to lug is coming in at 45.6 millimeters, and I measured that from the case itself. I ignored these end links, even though they are fixed there, as you can see, you know, kind of female, and we'll look at this more throughout. Because there's such a downturn, I really don't think it's fair to include that in the lug to lug. So I went from the actual true integrated style of 45.6. The thickness, including this flat sapphire crystal, is coming in at 12.7 millimeters. Speaking of the crystal, as I mentioned, it is a flat sapphire crystal. But one thing to note that's unique here is they actually went with a double-sided AR coating. So it has on the inside, which is common, as well as the outside, which is pretty uncommon, especially at the price point, which I'll just go and get right to that. This is going to be coming in at a staggering $259 for the super early bird pricing on most of the dial options. They will have another one that I don't want to spoil yet that's going to be a little more expensive at $315, but we'll talk about that further in just a moment. As far as the movement, this is, as you can see, a bi-compax kind of configuration here. And as I'm sure you did, could deduce from the pushers, this is a chronograph. They're using a Seiko VK64A, which if you're not familiar with that one, there's a lot of them to keep track of. That is a Seiko Mecha Quartz. What that means is you have quartz simplicity, so you're going to have to change a battery. However, in between then, it's going to always be set every time you pick it up. But as you go for the chrono function, you can see... You don't have those annoying, at least to me, ticks going around. So it has that nice smooth sweep. Good balance overall. We've looked at other Mecha Quartz in the past. It's one that I think is a good option. As far as the water resistance, this is coming standard with 100 meters or 10 atmospheres water resistance. Plenty respectable for a watch of this style. Uh, certainly it is intended to be a dive watch. And I think that's perfectly good for your basic wear usage, splash, you know, those kind of things. As far as the weight, size to my six and a half inch wrist, on this bracelet, it is coming in at 133.3 grams. So really not too bad there at all. Slightly uh, above what I would call a featherweight, slightly below what I would call a middleweight. So I don't know uh, boxing terminology that well, but somewhere in the middle there as far as uh, that, uh, that sizing overall. I find it balances out well on the wrist. I've been pleased with that. All right, so now that we have the basic specs out of the way, let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into the watch itself. First, for the colors. Obviously, we have the version we're looking at today, which is the skeletonized version. That is an acetate dial. They originally planned on doing a sapphire dial. However, uh, that smoked acetate that they use, very high end uh, as far as the, the quality as best I can tell. And they did say that they sourced that well. But that being said, as far as the sapphire, there was a break uh, concern there with having all of the holes in the sub dial and everything else. Additionally, though, they will have a white version, a blue version, a salmon version, 
a green version that changes up your markers on that as well. And then finally, the one that I didn't want to spoil, they have an Aventurine dial with Meteorite sub-dial variant. That's going to be coming in at $315 for the uh, the pricing on that, but really slick setup. I don't believe I've ever seen that combo with the Aventurine primary and the Meteorite sub-dials. I've seen the opposite ones, but I can't recall seeing this, especially at this kind of price point. All right, as far as the actual layout of this, the dial, as you might have noticed, ours is going to be unique because we're looking at the only skeletized version. But that being said, each of these are going to have a fairly similar construction. You're going to have a bi-compax layout, so you have the sub-dials at the 3 and the 9 o'clock position. Additionally, those do have nice borders as well as the perimeter around separating your markers. That has nice frame bordering and then your date at the 6 o'clock position as well. One thing you will notice with the skeletonized version, you get kind of that ghost or phantom date position all the way around, which go, not ghost, not referring to the crown, but the actual just slightly making out. I haven't found it to be distracting in usage because that smoke is, I think, well balanced. It maintains that legibility that you usually don't have with the skeleton, and we'll look at another version. But additionally, it does still, I think, give you just that little bit of pop of seeing some of the accents of the movement and the date as you go throughout. For the printing, at the 12 o'clock position, you'll see the brand name, as well as directly below that, you'll see the serial number and count on that. Of course, with this being a prototype, it's just marked zero. Down at the 6 o'clock position, with very small text, you do have the chronosport, and then additionally, you do have the uh, marking of the water resistance as well. Shifting out to the perimeter, you can see that there is nice minute and second markers, and those are actually delineated with half second ticks in between or small hashes as well. As you go further out, you can see there is a rehot, and it does have a tachymeter, as would be common for a chronograph. Shifting over to the hardware, I would describe the primary hands, in this with this configuration, you do not have a primary second hand. We have the primary, the three hand configuration, that's for the chronograph. There is no ticking second, which is nice in my opinion with the quartz, I don't like seeing that tick. And I think if you want precision, you've got the option for the chronograph as well. But the hour and minute hand are going to be what I would describe as a polished spear. And then when you look at the second hand, that's what I would call like a skeletonized lollipop kind of configuration with an accent tip out towards the end for your nice arrow there. As far as all of the accents throughout, you can see that this is heavily polished, so you have your framing, your handset as well, and then shifting over to the markers. These markers are also polished. Additionally, on the inner perimeter, they are going to be faceted, and then on the exterior, they're nice open, which I think gives a neat look to that. Instead of having it fully framed, I think that's cool on how it kind of just spills over to the outer perimeter with being opened up there. And then at the 12 o'clock position, you do have a triangle to differentiate that. So nice touches. All of this is going to be loomed with the exception of the sub-dial hands. As we can see here, they applied, I think relatively generously, BGW9. I say relatively, for the style, being a little bit of a dressier piece, not leaning into the dive, I think it is sufficient. Certainly not a loom monster, but I think it gets the job done. Shifting out to the bezel, as we already talked about, the bezel here, it is set back, and it has, as you can see, a dodecagon cut into this, which really gives it a unique look compared to just your standard round bezel configuration. And additionally, you can see they did polished accents throughout there with that, which I think, you know, balances out where it gives you, I think, a pretty classy look, but it also gives a unique and compelling look and still gives you plenty of pop with that polish as well as the cutout that is unique to this style. Shifting over to the case, the case is another really unique touch. As you can see, it's kind of a slab configuration for the case side itself. Steeply downturned lugs, which I like, which keeps it just below the case back. But additionally, though, as you look out towards the lugs, you can see how that kind of radiates and cuts into that. So it kind of falls down there and falls in there, which I think really adds to the overall lore and peel. I do want to mention, as far as the finishing, this is actually currently a bead blasted finish. However, on the production version, this is going to be brushed. So everywhere where you see bead blast, and that's true in other areas, it's going to be shifted over to brush. I'm not honestly sure how I feel about that. I do like the look of the bead blast for something different, but I think brush will incorporate well also. As we already looked at, there is unique aspects for the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock position here. But one thing we didn't look at is what that actually results in. So with that kind of cut into the side there, it actually left this nice clean triangle in the middle, which you can see they polished up 
and that goes in keeping with the bracelet links as well. I will say, I went into this, and I, I had a, uh, a prejudice against that, where I was anticipating that I was going to fully uh, rip that part of that, that one apart and say I would prefer brushing there. I gotta say, I've actually liked it. Unlike their prior version, in, as a, having a huge area there with the polishing, this is just a relatively small, when you have it on wrist, it's a relatively small accent, and you don't notice it that much, but it does, I think, lean a little more into the dressy style and give it some pop, and I have enjoyed it. It's, uh, it's actually been a pleasant surprise for me. On the uh, 3 o'clock side, you can see that this does have integrated crown guards, and that's going to separate not only your pushers, but additionally your crown itself. Speaking of the crown, this is a tiny one. It's coming in at 4.3 millimeters. That being said, because this is a mecha quartz, you're not going to have to mess with it much, but additionally, I found with that aggressive knurling, it really actually is not too bad to grab at all. I found it to be pretty easy in overall usage, which surprised me for a crown being that side and with size and with having the aggressive crown guards integrated around that. This is a push-pull configuration, as you saw there, so it's not a screw down, which I think, again, is in keeping with the style. It is signed on the exterior, and you can see their hourglass logo for that, and that's nicely uh, inlaid there. And then you can see the pushers start stop as well as reset. So that's a nice touch as well. And that's not something you see all together that commonly, though it's very subtle and you don't notice it unless you're specifically looking. As far as the case back, the case back on this is going to be a press fit, which I think is perfectly acceptable for a watch of this style. The finishing is going to be a mix of brushing as well as polish accents. The milling is what, to my eye at least, appears to be a steering wheel, and then in the middle you have their nice little logo touch of incorporating that hourglass again. So good continuity there overall. And I think it's a good looking, clean case back, where it does again have the serial number at the bottom at the six o'clock position, but it, do note, while this one has a different number, that's just for the prototype itself, that will be consistent with the dial layout as well. Shifting over to the bracelet. As we already alluded to, the bracelet on this, despite the 20 millimeter lugs, is coming in at 22 millimeters on the exterior. That does taper pretty aggressively down to 16 millimeters at the clasp. Speaking of the clasp, this does come standard with a butterfly clasp, which I think incorporates well and is in keeping with the overall style of kind of mixing, where you have a little bit of the dress, a little bit of the sport accent for that. Additionally, as we've already looked at, this has a nice integrated look to it overall. Apologize for the dog barking in the background there. The Integrated touch, the thing that I like about this is you don't have the downside of a typical integrated bracelet where you would not be able to change it around as we already looked at, but it does give that nice clean appearance that you get with an integrated look. So that's a nice touch. For finishing, you have a mix of both brushing as well as polishing to separate things out. The retention is going to be a pin and collar uh, construction here. So it has a little bit of a fiddly pain uh, with those uh, those collars, but I haven't found them to be too bad. The center links actually tuck underneath, so it keeps them retained with the collar, and it really wasn't too bad to size, though just keep in mind, uh, you will have to go through a little bit of fiddling, but you're never going to have a screw backing out on you, so that's a nice touch there. And then as we already saw, it does, does have quick release spring bars on the back. All right, so that's a better feel for the watch itself. Let's go ahead and look at a couple comps for different reasons. First, I just wanted to show this next to, this is a Zello Sky Raider. You can see kind of just the typical legibility that you get with a skeletonized watch. This is an aggressively skeletonized watch and it has the benefit of being against a black backing right here. But that being said, to me, you get a lot more legibility with this with that nice smoked dial versus a traditional skelly, though I do love this one as well. Additionally, I wanted to go ahead and bring in, this just gives you an idea of sizing. This is comparing its 41.5 to the 39mm on this Zellos Comet, but mainly I wanted you to see that Aventurine just to give you an idea of what that dial configuration would look like, or that, uh, that dial variant rather. That being said, sizing wise, as you can see, I think the dials are actually relatively similar. Once you factor in the Rehod, the slightly wider bezel, those kinds of things for it. The actual presence overall, this one, if you're looking for case presence, has certainly a little more. But if you're looking at the dial itself, that's where I think it's pretty size versatile that we'll look at. You know, it's, I think for smaller wristed folks like myself, I think it fits perfectly fine and it has a nice small, fairly dressy kind of presence. But for larger wristed folks, you do have more of that case presence as well, which kind of balances it out and gives you more versatility there. All right, so wrapping things up, where does that leave us for overall? First, I've got to say, I think it's an excellent value. The Seiko Mecha Quartz movement, certainly not the most premium movement in the world, but I think they're great workhorse, reliable movements. You can just pick it up, grab and go kind of functionality. But coming in at $259 for the aesthetic you're getting, the unique design, the little touches they have throughout, I think it's great. I think it's very attractive pricing. I've got to say this, the styling, um, I have actually 
really enjoyed uh, overall. But the biggest thing is I have found this to be very versatile in terms of the sizing and, and in terms of the styling. I have worn this with everything from jeans and a t-shirt to a suit, and I found it to be up for every task that I've, uh, I put it through. So that's been excellent. And then again, as we already talked about for wrist sizing, I think it's versatile there too. Comfort, despite the fact that the bracelet itself doesn't have a lot of articulation, it actually drapes really nicely and wraps for at least my wrist very well, and I found it to be extremely comfortable. We already talked about the striking looks and the unique styling of this, which I think is great, especially at the price point. And then just the mecha quartz, as I've already alluded to, the grab-and-go simplicity. You know, it's one, I like automatics as much as the next guy, but this has been nice if I'm running late or anything like that. Just grab it, slap it on the wrist, and it's up for any task. That's been nice. But I do have some minor critiques, though most of these, I've got to say, I was honestly struggling to come up with things because I've really enjoyed my time with this. That being said, there are some items that, for my personal feedback, I wanted to share with you all. First, for this prototype, as you can see, this pin here is stuck on this one. That is a known issue with uh, with this. They have already adjusted that on the production version, and it was only this one link. The rest of them actually size relatively easily, but it's something you might have seen there, and I did want to point out. The butterfly clasp, that one is always going to be polarizing. If it fits you, great. If it doesn't, unfortunately, it's kind of a pain in the butt there, and you're probably going to want to go to another strap option. I will say I think this is going to fit most people because they went with relatively small links. So I think you'll get close enough fit. The way that this sits a little bit solid, as well as the smaller links, I find you have a little bit more buffer as far as the sizing for this and still fitting relatively comfortable and easily on the wrist. The bracelet, as we've already talked about, even though unlike most integrated bracelets, you do have the option of changing out, the fact that you have to use that link adapter, that might extend it out a little bit farther. I'm not honestly certain, having not seen it, what that will look like aesthetically. It's nice to have the versatility, but I do wish they could have gotten just a little more clearance just to fit straps uh, on there without needing the adapter. That being said, I think it's just the nature of the design, and with a standard integrated, you wouldn't have any option at all. And then finally, this is one that I realize many may disagree, and feel free to hit me up in the comments if you uh, want to share your thoughts, but the double-sided AR. You know, personally, I'm a fan of the inner AR, especially when you're dealing with a flat crystal like this. You know, it is nice having that additional uh, anti-reflection. However, with having a sapphire crystal, I don't want to lose the scratch resistance. To me, having that exterior AR is not worth it, so I prefer to pick up the little bit of glare, especially with a flat crystal, you can pretty easily adapt for that and only having on the inner side. But again, opinions are going to vary for that. And these are pretty minor things across the board. So where does that leave us overall? As I've already kind of indicated throughout this, I think it's an excellent value. I've thoroughly enjoyed this overall across a range of style and that just lends to the overall versatility and at this price point i really don't think you can go wrong if any of these styles any of these colorways speak to you definitely encourage you to check it out so i hope this video has been helpful for you if you did enjoy it please do hit that like button additionally if you haven't done so already please do smash that subscribe button helps me out it's greatly appreciated thanks for watching